Dear friends in Christ, welcome to the Liturgy of the Word with Father Evaristus, Ege Meyo Abu. Today is Friday of week 26 in Ordinary Time Year 2. And because it is the fourth day of October, we celebrate today St. Francis of Assisi. Have you ever suffered from a heartbreak before? In this part of the world, we call it breakfast. Jesus was served breakfast by the people in the towns where most of his miracles happened. He expected them to repent, but they remained in their sins. How often have we served breakfast to God? Please stay tuned as we break down God's word today. Remember, Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And if you find this video impactful, share it with your friends. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, as we study your word today, we beg you to grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. May St. Francis, the great preacher, intercede for us as we remember him today. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 verses 12 to 21, chapter 40, verses 3 to 5. Responsorial Psalm comes from Psalm 139, and our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. First reading, a reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Have you commanded the morning since your days began? and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it. It is changed like clay under the seal, and it is dyed like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare, if you know all this. Where is the way to the dwelling of the light? And where is the place of darkness, that you may take it to its territory? and that you may descend the paths to its home. You know, for you were born then, and the number of your days is great. Then Job answered the Lord, Behold, I am of small account. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand in my mouth. I have spoken once, and I will not answer twice, but I will proceed no further. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. O Lord, you search me and you know me. You yourself know my resting and my rising. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. You know all my ways through and through. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. Oh, where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your face? If I climb the heavens, you are there. If I lie in the grave, you are there. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. If I take the wings of the dawn, or dwell at the sea's furthest end, even then your hand would lead me. Your right hand would hold me fast. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. For it was you who formed my inmost being, knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you, I thank you who wonderfully made me. 
How wonderful are your works. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Today, harden not your hearts, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable in the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to hate. He who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. Do not make God sad. There are people with whom God is not happy with. Firstly, God is not happy with those who trade in the temple. Don't you know that my house shall be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of robbers? Matthew chapter 21 verse 13, Mark chapter 11 verse 17. These traders were ripping off pilgrims who came to the temple to pray, taking advantage of their faith. Jesus told the 70 not to carry bags for money, but today ministers compete among themselves in the display of riches. Secondly, God is not happy with those who doubt his power. Jesus was in his hometown and the people were murmuring, Is not this the carpenter's son? Mark chapter 6 verse 2 Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith and could not work many miracles there. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach him must first believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Thirdly, God is not happy with those who refuse to repent from their sins even after witnessing his miracles. Jesus said, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have long ago repented, seeking in sackcloth and ashes. Luke chapter 10 Verse 13. While writing his gospel, John described Jesus' miracles as signs. This was very instructive. Miracles are not things we should glory in, rather, they are signs that point to deeper realities. Upon seeing the great catch of fish, Peter immediately went down on his knees before Jesus, saying, Go away from me, Lord for I am a sinful man. Luke chapter 5 verse 8 Peter and his companions left the fish behind and followed Jesus. Today, we seem to be leaving Jesus behind to follow the fish. If you truly believe in God, you would not need him to prove himself by miracles. To those who ask Jesus to walk a miracle to clear his name, after accusing him of healing by the spirit of Beelzebub, Jesus said, An evil and adulterous generation seeks a sign, but no sign shall be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Matthew chapter 12 verse 39 Job suffered a lot during his trials. But his faith never wavered. He did not need a miracle from God to prove his existence. In today's first reading, 
God spoke, and Job answered, saying, Behold, I am of small account. I lay my hand in my mouth. Job said he will not talk again. When God asked Job some questions, to see that even when we are going through all of these difficulties in life, we, we, we have no right to open our mouths to say that God does not exist because we don't know everything. We cannot see the big picture. And Job said, I will not talk again. If I have answered, I speak no further. Dear friends, bad days will come. There may not always be miracles to cheer your heart. In the words of St. John of the Cross, you may experience dark nights. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Develop a tough faith in God. Let not life's troubles shake your faith and trust in God. In conclusion, rather than ask God for miracles, why not seek repentance? How do we hope for God's intervention in our lives when we continue to do the things that offend Him? No one likes to be used and dumped. But this is exactly what we do to God when we seek His blessings but refuse to obey His words. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Francis of Assisi. Francis was the son of a prosperous cloth merchant in Assisi when his father objected to having his goods sold without his consent to pay for the restoration of a church, the bishop commanded Francis to repay the money to his father. He did, but he also renounced his father and gave back everything he had ever received from his father, even his garments. He began a life of perfect evangelical poverty, living by begging, and even then, only accepting the worst food that people had to give. He preached to all about the love of God and the love of the created world, because, having renounced everything, he celebrated everything he received, or saw, or heard, as a gift. A rich man sold everything and joined him in living next to a leper colony. A canon from a neighboring church gave up his position and joined them also. They looked into the gospel and saw the story of the rich man whom Jesus told to sell everything. They saw Jesus telling his disciples to take nothing with them on their journey. They saw Jesus saying that his, his followers must also carry a cross. And on that basis, they founded the Franciscan Order. Because Francis was wearing an old brown garment and begged from a peasant tied round the middle with a string that became the, Fran that became the Franciscan Order the same cloth that Francis wore to beg, now became the Franciscan habit. Francis started the practice of setting up a crib in the church to celebrate the nativity. He died in the year 1226, having begun a spiritual revolution. The Franciscans endure to this day. May God bless his words in our hearts. May God give us the grace to live authentic Christian lives, that we may seek God, not necessarily because of what we want to gain from him, but because we love him, because we are ready to give up everything for his sake. May St. Francis intercede for us. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.